show you what I carry in my lure bag. Uh, things are a bit different depending on the time of year. <laughs> it's only May. Whew, had a bit of a walk to get here. Uh, but I just want to show you what I carry in my bag normally for lure fishing. So first things first, it's best to travel light. The more experienced I get with this lure fishing, the more important I think it is to take as little as possible. Go through some of the things I think you really need. There's also stuff I've heard people talk about I don't think you need. It's just going to slow you up. So anyway, this is a very personal choice. So today we're using the Shimano Dia Luna. Um, we have featured it a little bit in the channel. But it's got a real soft... It's got this... You see it's got this really, really thin tip. And the reason I'm using this uh, is because this time of year we're in May now, May and June, maybe lighter, softer plastics bounced around the rocks. Not those big needle fish that you've seen me use. So that's the way we'll be doing it uh, for the next month or so. And this Dialuna is fantastic, paired there with the Ultegra. 18 pound braid, 18 pound fluorocarbon. As the season gets along, we tend to use a needle fish a bit more, shallow divers and what have you. But actually, smaller plastic lures seem to do better earlier in the season. Um, and metals throughout, actually. A lot of these are very light, and this Dialuna will only really cast about 10 grams. So, um, what it does, it means you can work this lure really well with this rod. Certainly, I'll be using this probably up until about July. Then I'm going to move on to a different type of rod. Uh, so, this lure here, I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> for what it is we're going to come on to lures a little bit more later and hopefully i'll remember what we've got there on the twist lock uh, the reel you've seen this before haven't you that's the ultegra uh, and i've got a couple of those and they'll go on my the main rod which is the favorite which i still recommend this is a cbl 902 mh it's a slightly heavier version than the one we used last year this will cast up to 35 grams uh, they do a slightly lighter one as well, which is good. Tricky to get hold of. Oh, while we're here, this is the Sluggo. Uh, another soft plastic with a slightly weighted hook on there. Show you. Tiny little tip. Imagine having a fish on that. So, what's in the bag? Uh, I'm going to start off with the main thing. Sunglasses. If you haven't got your Polaroid sunglasses, it's not even worth going fishing for me. Not only do they come across, and what it does, it'll mark out. These are really good. These are the Rapala ones. And these will enable you to see underwater features. And it's a lot of fun is you'll be able to see the fish better as well. A hat which stops the light coming in over the top of the sunglasses is good too. So, polarized sunglasses. Get those on. In terms of these lures, we'll come on to these in a minute. Horses for courses, so I figure out where I'm going to fish and I take 12 hard lures. A bit of preparation before you go, I've got five or six of these boxes full of lures in various conditions. <laughs> um, so let's have a look. We've got the Pachenko, sorry, the Popchenko here. This is like a surface popper. Uh, playing around with some single hooks on that one. The Rapala walk and roll, new for this season for me. Uh, the Axia as well, which is a Pachenko copy, J11, uh, always, and I've always rated those J11s, a few copies as well. I'm going to be doing some videos on cheaper lures, uh, see if they can match the branded ones. Uh, some more from Rapala in here, these are all new lures actually for this season. This is the X-Rap Long Cast Shallow. So as we go through these, my intent really is just to end up with one box we wouldn't use these x wraps this time of year we might use that little lemon shad that is a rip stop again perhaps not something we'd use early on in the season oh, make sure it goes back properly a few surface lures in here as well uh, we've got all these soft lures here as well um, let's have a quick look at those sand eel imitations this is a nice little one here this is like a little drop shot LRF lure. I've got a load of those actually, and that's where that Dialuna will come in handy. It's weedless on the latch, 
and we'll just bury the hook in there to see if they're a little the idea with this is I'm just going to bounce it along the bottom see if the fish are feeding further down this is interesting little drop shot sort of lure um, I just use it with a weighted head so when the bass are chasing smaller bait fish so it's also good early season something like that representing those very small bait fish that you see uh, and actually throughout the year so you can use those weighted or unweighted I'll always carry some of these 5 inch Senkos as well uh, unweighted or weighted great little lure that one particularly good at night had a few bass at night with those and also things like this just sort of wider fatter shads that one's seen better days but that'll find its way into the early season box as well a few sort of random ones here um, representing rockfish early season tend to pair those big 5-0 hooks you can see here that's the pirate lure as well another good little soft plastic a little bit more robust as well the pirate lures cast reasonably well some budget stuff for later in the year I won't be putting that in there but the pirate lures will be going in the box we end up with at the end and remember those we did a little video on those they're a Korean lure uh, it sort of has bait little pods that come out of it never caught anything on it though maybe I'll give those another go this year um, lots of tails and odds and ends for both the drift lures uh, and the fish black minnow as well uh, the fish black minnow will be in there various guises various heads various tails just got a big wrap of different ones for that and 25 gram uh, black minnows as well oh, you've seen these from shimano we did a giveaway i've kept <laughs> i've kept two for myself uh, these have got that sort of flashing thing in the middle there um, pretty full-on lure that one again for later in the year now I do like the sluggo this is the nine inch sluggo different ways of rigging them and fishing them but really are a very slow sort of retrieve uh, it's the sort of lure I'd use off jetties off piers and things like that uh, where the current does most of the work so that'll be going in my lure bag this year more of these axias and beach walker wedge uh, someone suggested that to me not used it yet will be dependent on what's being caught and what the bass might be coughing up smaller pachenko it's a 100 be using that soon never use those squid ones these are the drift lures caught numerous fish on these and they will also be going in the lure bag this year it's a weedless version on that hook some trolling lures i'll be using that for just off the surface um, savage gear worth a look at as well these are the jig heads i'll put a couple of those packs in the in the lure box if i need to change it round and this one will these sort of needle fish will stay at home uh, unless maybe for the kayak and things like that a walk and roll very, very similar to that pachenko 100 a few little met metals are going in we've got the mini herring uh, savage gear seekers definitely having some of those brilliant little metals they are uh, there'll be a few of those in the bag and the frankie this is a big surface lure called the frankie it's a beast of a lure this one again i'll be using it later in the year but these shads i will be using uh, not a weedless one this one and then when the mackerel are running later in the year if the bass are plucking off mackerel and something like that there's a big trolling lure from the kayak or from the shore similar with these more heavily weighted 35 gram shads as well let's wait for the mackerel before we get excited using those j13 and it's uh, mackerel guys i can use that early-ish the big singles similar to this i had fish in may and june with the komomo 2 as a specific mark where they just wanted that last year so that might be going in uh, another example of those shad lures those drift shad lures here so i've got lots of soft plastic stick like baits things like the do live stick 
uh, in white a good one the savage gear gravity stick as well they do the paddle tail i think there's a pin tail one as well also got these these will do your split rings as well take out a, a hook just a basic amazon brand now got something also got these these will do your split rings as well take out a, a hook just a basic amazon brand now got something else in here that's similar uh, this is the laser this one's the laser one as well similar as you can see i don't wash it down after every trip uh, but braid cutter mostly to cut the braid and then that part of it there like on that other meter one that i just showed you uh, if you need to get into the split rings it's quite good for it uh, works quite well this version but make sure you look after it better than i do back <laughs> it's been with me for years so it's more of a nostalgic thing uh, it does get wet uh, which is obviously a problem a waterproof bag is going to be a lot better um well, i've had it for years so carry on using it all sorts of different bags if you have a look here this is veals um you can spend as much as you want get a much posher better segmented bag than the one i'm showing you but another alternative is to use one of these little shoulder bags i use this occasionally when i'm fishing really light even wrap the lures in tin foil uh, double or triple up the tin foil and use those also use some very cheap saltwater flies as teasers so they just sit on the fluorocarbon above uh, the plug or lure uh, just as like an extra attractor very often catch fish on those i do sometimes use this karma drone rucksack as well if i'm doing any fly fishing Another handy thing is to use the foam winders for things like hooks, tidies everything up a bit. TC zip wake as well, that will be in my lure box all the time. Got an amazing action that zips left and right really well on the top just under the surface. As for clothing, I don't tend to wear things like waders, I prefer shorts. This as well, this is a northerner's plaster. Um, electrical tape that you can use for a plaster yeah it has a multitude of uses that carrier bag if I'm going to keep the bass pick up litter uh, I'm using a suffix fluorocarbon at the moment I'll always put in some mackerel lures um, hawkeyes or sabiki types so if there are mackerel there it's always worth it. At the end of the day, if you haven't got your bass and there are mackerel, maybe you want to catch a few for tea. So um, those are there with the obviously with the one ounce leads as well. There's a few trebles. I use these VMC trebles, different sizes. And then twist locks as well, four O's, five O's. I'll show you a little box full of odds and ends. I'll show you those. Really just set up if I'm going to do any live baiting. Sometimes change my mind mid session. Uh, I might go for some live baiting, uh, but it's always there if I need to. Plus the extra rings, split rings they are. A few little bits to repair, lead shot, power gum. Again, for the float fishing, but it's not really what we're talking about today. Occasionally I'll bring a spare reel, all ready to go. Although wind knots are easier than people think to take out, uh, having a spare reel could save you days fishing. If not, at the very least, uh, certainly a spare spool or two ready to go. I'm making a small collection here of lures i found. <laughs> a bubble float as well. Metals as well. Silver and blue, 15 gram, 10 gram. The sav these aren't the Savage Gear Seekers. And those Seekers do seem to fish quite well. Uh, did quite well on those actually last year, early season. But these are the Flayden versions. A little bit cheap. Don't see too many people using metals. And we all get a bit carried away with the hard lures. But it's definitely worth some metals in there. Oh, what is it? I'm still trying to think what that is. I've had some bass on it as well. Any ideas? Well, if you want to see me catch some of those bass with some of these lures, uh, you can check out this video here.